uh, the presentation is also discussion. I give to you back by Intan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Um, thank you, Prof. Uh, greeting us from Manila. Uh, thank you for giving the opening remarks for, for today. So, uh, with the further ado, we will go to the main section. Uh, the first, we will have a presentation from uh, Dr. Ari and also Pak Fajar. And I hand this session to the moderator, Pak Agung. Please welcome, Pak Agung. The time is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mbak Intan, and yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and for some of you, good morning, and perhaps for some others, uh, good evening, or good early morning, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we're happy now, uh, here we have two uh, lecturers. Uh, First, to present his uh, experience and expertise in just, uh, of course, it's just a natural, I should say, perhaps for just 30 to 40 minutes, is uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Ari Adrian Shah Samsuro. Many of you already know him and is an assistant professor at the Department of Geography, Planning and Environment, Institute for Management Research of the Radboud University, the Netherlands. Of course, he lives in Netherlands. So good morning, Bahari. And happy to have you here. Um, his morning, next book in he is an expert in game theoretical modeling and experimental approach to spatial planning. And he's got his first degree, I um, mean, bachelor's degree in regional and urban planning for from ITB, Institute of Technology at Bandung. And then his uh, master's from Faculty of Technology, Policy and Management, Dev University of Technology, the Netherlands, and continue to his uh, doctoral degree from Neymagen School of Management. Uh, it's got a PhD in Urban Planning and Management. Neymagen. Neymagen. <laughs> Nijmegen. 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 University of Netherlands. So, uh, it's been uh, a while since 2013 or something as an associate professor there. And also uh, his experience in academics as well as uh, research and uh, work experience also not less important is to uh, supervise several PhD candidates. Uh, it's no mm -hmm. question for that. And including his uh, research is among them because there are too many here. <laughs> uh, is uh, I just mentioned two of them, okay? Power to people, an integrated approach for governance innovation through local energy initiatives for urban coastal communities in Indonesia. Uh, the year to 2020 until 2022 is finished now. And the okay. second one is this Europe China Joint Research Project financing clean air through land value capturing. Uh, it's between 2018 to 2021. So uh, these two are uh, prominent projects uh, Pak Ari has done with his team. And for supervising PhD students, we have uh, some familiar names here. I just mentioned again two of them. <laughs> It's not a secret, right, Pak Ari? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, uh, Pak Sari Fudin with the topic Land Management for Coastal Resilience, the study of Central Java, 2019 until now. Uh, 
and the second one Dian Rahmawati uh, land development strategies for the provision of affordable housing case study of Surabaya Indonesia uh, the same 2019 until now and of course yes active as a professor as well as um, researchers and uh, giving course and trainings and so on. Also voluntarily involvement uh, to many of them. And some list of publications. I again I just mentioned two of them among the most recent. The first one is an article in cities. Uh, cities uh, is uh, among the highest reputable journal there. The, the title is Price Competition and Market Concentration Evidence from the Land Market in China. Co-authored by Chao Plough Makers, Van der Krabben, and Ma. Uh, the year is 2024. Ah, still um right from the open <laughs> the second one uh, is in journal of transport and health uh, of course it is another highly reputable journal the, the title is on the role of subjective well-being in mediating the relationship between spatial temporal and health variables and still many other uh, you can ask but in turn, if you need this um, <laughs> list of applications, <laughs> and also books, yeah, book chapter as well as uh, a book, yeah, okay. Congratulations, Fari. Uh, now, um, without further delay, I would like to um, have. Pak Ari to present his um, speech now, and after Pak Ari, then there will be Pak Pajar. Uh, first, I will also read his CV in short as well, and then uh, ask him to present his uh, presentation today. Please, Pak Ari, the next 30 to 40 minutes is yours. Thank you very much. Ago for very generous introduction. <laughs> uh, all right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon, uh, everybody in Indonesia. So morning in here. So shall I just <clears throat> share my screen? Can you all see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Clear. All right. Yes, clear. clear. Okay. Uh, so uh, even though the um, the theme of today is uh, urbanization in middle sized city, if I'm mistaken, right, Pak Agung, uh, yes. Intan. But in here, um, I will not uh, uh, focus on middle sized city, but perhaps it uh, also include in middle uh, in my presentation. But uh, in here, I would like to present or give um, uh, a talk and. We can discuss about special planning in Netherlands in general, actually. So the concept and practices, uh, how it, uh, uh, it, is, it is implemented in, in the Netherlands, uh, and a little uh, history of uh, special planning in the Netherlands. So uh, this is the outline of my talk today. So I hope I can uh, manage to deliver it in 30 until 40 minutes to come. So first, uh, <clears throat> uh, I will try to... Uh, in brief, of course, uh, to ex uh, to describe, to explain uh, about the special planning history and also the Netherlands and its special planning history, and afterwards um, the planning institute, special planning institution and process in the Netherlands, and afterwards uh, about what uh, how special plan in Netherlands looks like, and how it is implemented, and I will close <clears throat> my talk today uh, by explaining <clears throat> some issues and social challenges on special planning in the Netherlands. So it's not all good. So of course, there's always a, a challenge. There's always issues, problems that we face even nowadays uh, related to special planning uh, in, in the Netherlands. 
So, all right, I will start with the uh, the special uh, the Netherlands in brief and also its special planning history. Um, so, if I suppose many of you, or if not all of you, knows uh, where Netherlands is. Uh, it's uh, not really big countries. It's just uh, quite small countries. So, um, it is uh, forty six times smaller than Indonesia. If I'm mistaken, it is even a little bit smaller than uh, uh, East Java province in Indonesia, a bit bigger than uh, uh, Central Java province. So that's the Netherlands compared to Indonesia. It's very, very small compared to Indonesia. And the population also compared to Indonesia is almost nothing. Yeah? So uh, um, I think this record from 2022, so uh, the Netherlands hits 18 million people. So compared to Indonesia, what is what is it now? What two hundred seventy million yes. uh, uh, people live in Indonesia? So well, the Netherlands is only eighteen million people. So the, for the whole country, yeah? so the whole country is only eighteen million people. And like Indonesia, so politically uh, or administratively, the Netherlands also divided into provinces and municipalities. So we uh, in here the Netherlands, uh, like Indonesia. They have three tiers of uh, of government. Yeah, so they have a national government, and then provincial government, provinces, and then municipality. So there are only twelve uh, provinces in the Netherlands, plus three special provinces in the Caribbean Sea, uh, and uh, three hundred forty four municipalities, or uh, they call it in here gemeente. So these municipalities, just like Indonesia, uh, kota or kabupaten, so, uh, some municipalities. Uh, can be characterized as rural uh, municipalities and the other can be characterized as urban uh, municipalities but they all the same basically so this is the third tier of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, administrative or uh, government uh, administration um considering the land use in the netherlands you can see in here so Still, the, the, the land in the Netherlands uh, are dominated by, um, uh, you can see here, uh, uh, by agriculture land. So almost 67% seven, uh, 7 of the land actually is still agriculture land in the Netherlands. Yeah? So only 15.5% uh, of the land mass uh, are, uh, is built up area. Uh, and the growth is also quite uh, quite small. So the the, the Dutch uh, government tried to maintain uh, 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 this this ratio actually. So it is not easy for the uh, for the Dutch municipality to expand its uh, its city. So it's built up area. So uh, because of the long history, I will uh, I will also mention about that. Um, even so, so the Netherlands can be seen as one of the most dense uh, um, uh, country in, in in Europe. So it's quite dense, yeah. Uh, even though, if we, we'll, uh, if sometimes uh, uh, you will have an opportunity to fly over Netherlands, this mostly what you uh, what you will see. So it's a flat land uh, with open spaces. Um, uh, with many canals, uh, or if you uh, had time to flew uh, to fly over during the uh, spring uh, season, then you can also see all uh, um, uh, the, the lands covered by by tulips in some part of the Netherlands like this. Um, but it is quite dense uh, uh, country, yeah? so quite dense um, uh, area. So especially the, the urban area, as you can see here, this is uh, Amsterdam. If you uh, see Amsterdam from, from above, the bird eye view of, uh, of Amsterdam, it's qu quite dense. Uh, and even though the, land, the, uh, the rest of the land is uh, um, uh, quite open uh, like this one, uh, like these three uh, pictures, uh, it, it is not not easy, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, to expand uh, the, the built up area to these open spaces, which mostly actually agricultural land. Um, uh, another characteristics of a Dutch area, uh, maybe you heard about that. The, the Netherlands actually is uh, uh, located in Delta region, in the estuaries of five rivers, uh, main rivers in Europe. Yeah. So that uh, therefore, uh, uh, Netherlands as a, as a country is quite prone to 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 flood risk. Uh, and uh, ten percent of the land, so uh, actually, uh, uh, consists of water bodies, whether it is rivers, lakes, or canals. 
uh, and 26% uh, of the land area actually below sea level, and the lowest point is seven, minus uh, seven meters. So if you ever uh, flew uh, uh, flew to, to Netherlands, to the, the main airport, Schiphol Airport, uh, actually located minus seven uh, below uh, sea level. So it is uh, low land countries, uh, uh, the, the the French, if uh, Mas Fajr still remember, they called uh, Netherlands Paiba, which means a lowland country. So that's also what uh, Netherlands known uh, in the ancient time. So lowland country because it's really really low, yeah. And uh, th th therefore, as I mentioned before, it is quite prone to uh, to to flood risk, both actually from sea uh, from uh, from sea and also from the uh, from the river. And the uh, there, there is a, a saying in the Dutch uh, among Dutch people. So this is quite uh, quite arrogance, but this is what they, they always mentioned. Yeah. So uh, they, they said uh, the God created the world. Yeah. God created the world, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. So they, they're quite uh, quite uh, proud uh, uh, of this because um, uh, the, the the Netherlands uh, most of the, the land in the Netherlands uh, are below sea level. But then they 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 try to 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 fight again uh, again that situation, reclaiming the land and um, managing uh, 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 the rivers, man managing the water, so they can have what they said uh, uh, to have a dry feet, so to say, so uh, uh, um, to to prevent themselves from flooding and to turn the land uh, that are uh, uh, quite risky. Uh, and also uh, has uh, low fertility to uh, to land that can uh, produce agriculture uh, uh, products and also can live without uh, the risk of flooding. Uh, as you know, uh, the Netherlands uh, actually the the, the 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 second largest ca uh, uh, country in the world that, that produce agricultural uh, product at the moment. Uh, but we can uh, discuss about that because that's not uh, all a good news about that. So there's also uh, many uh, negative effects uh, of that. One of them uh, related to the environmental damage. So, but uh, that's it, the, uh, the Netherlands has uh, has a long history uh, um, to deal with uh, uh, with uh, with a flood risk and to turn their land into a productive uh, agriculture land. So that's why um, uh, in uh, in the Netherlands, uh, uh, because of the, that long history, uh, um, most of the agricultural land in the Netherlands ex uh, um, uh, are pre uh, preserved um, uh, by the law. So it's not easy for for the Dutch government to um, uh, to uh, uh, to change the land use from agriculture uh, to build up area, um, and the. Planning in the Netherlands also start from uh, uh, um, uh, from arranging or managing water bodies uh, 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 actually, so uh, it's not um, uh, land, uh, land use plan in the beginning, but it more a water uh, management plan, so to say. So that's how planning uh, started in the Netherlands, and that plan, uh, that special plan. Uh, was aimed at organizing swampland or uh, estuary uh, area and also its bu water bodies uh, to become agricultural and also residential uh, uh, area. So, oh yeah, by reclamation, by uh, building dikes, uh, uh, dams uh, uh, to uh, to manage uh, the water flow in, in the country. And uh, because of that, many of the, the Dutch uh, area <coughs> yeah, uh, <coughs> can be seen uh, in uh, since beginning as a polder system, so that's how they they develop uh, their uh, their living area, their residential area, and also area for many other activities. And uh, in fact, uh, this um, uh, the, uh, this polder system comes long before the the Dutch government actually was established. So before the Dutch government was established, so many Dutch uh, communities created what they call as water board, a board or water authority to manage their area, to manage uh, 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 the water flow in, in their area. So the, the earliest record of this water board, uh, water board or uh, water authority was in, 1250, uh, in the years 1255. So, and uh, while the first Dutch government was first established, it only 
three hundred years afterwards. So uh, the, the the Dutch people uh, first have the, the their water government before they have the the the, the, the what what uh, how do I call it the, the real government body. Yeah, the first government body in in the Netherlands or uh, at local level, and um, uh, and it aims uh, it aimed for uh, uh, at uh, uh, arranging or managing the water bodies or polder system uh, uh, in the area. And they, they developed that based on social cohesion and also corporate system. So uh, it's based on, the, on, on merit, yeah, <clears throat> because of the necessity uh, to live, um, uh, uh, to survive in the pit land and also in uh, 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 high risk area uh, uh, for flooding. So they create these small governments of uh, a body in uh, many places in the Netherlands. And only in 1579, then they come together and form the, the uh, 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 and form a country, which at the beginning actually a republic. Nowadays, uh, uh, maybe you know it, Netherlands are, uh, is a kingdom. But in the beginning, when it first established as a country, actually it was a republic. Yeah, um, and uh, this water water board, this water authority, still exists until now. Before it was a hundred uh, water bodies uh, in the Netherlands. So um, imagine like uh, every cities were uh, uh, were, uh, were was um, uh, managed by this water uh, water authority or water board, and nowadays they create uh, uh, um, several of them actually merge to one another, and at the moment currently there are still twenty one uh, water board or water uh, authority exists in the whole Netherlands. And as I mentioned before, even cities in the Netherlands was uh, were um, uh, developed or planned based on this polder system. For instance, as you can see here, so the Delft uh, Delft cities so is a, a small city between uh, the Hague and Rotterdam. Uh, yeah, I used to live in the city, but the, it, it was uh, it's not look like this, of course. But before in the seventeenth century, it looks like this. Yeah. So the city was surrounded by canal, and uh, um, and it's all actually uh, within what they call as a polder system, uh, um, and many other cities also uh, also looks a little bit like this. So uh, how they 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 arrange a living area and also um, area for many activities um, uh, together with uh, with water bodies in in uh, uh, in that area. So that's in in uh, in brief uh, the um, the Netherlands and how its special special planning actually emerged in in the country. Um, so next, I will also uh, I will explain about how is it the Dutch special planning institution and how uh, the, the process of special planning in the Netherlands. So in the beginning of um, uh, eighteen uh, until sorry until the end of eighteen centuries. Most of laws and regulation in the Netherlands were made at local level, or in the beginning, even in this water uh, authority area or in polder polder area. Yeah, and then it becomes uh, it becomes a uh, municipality. So many of laws, most of laws and regulation in the Netherlands, mostly made at this uh, at this level, at this local level, as municipality level, or they call it commenter nowadays. And including those related to special planning. So each city has their own special plan. They, they made their own special plan. So, and even though uh, in uh, 18th centuries, there, there already the uh, Dutch uh, government, uh, already uh, um, uh, national government uh, of the Netherlands, yeah. But still, most of the laws and regulation made at local uh, were made uh, at local level, and especially the, the special plan. There's no integrated special planning uh, uh, at national level uh, at that time. <clears throat> and some municipalities carried out their uh, their special plan, uh, uh, implement their special plan, they made special plan, and they also uh, can uh, acquire uh, a land. They can uh, make a land acquisition process, by, uh, for instance, by uh, buying from uh, private uh, parties, uh, farmers, or also other municipalities. Yeah, um, but but as I mentioned before, it's not really easy to to, to do that. But some municipal uh, municipalities can manage to do that, so they can uh, convert uh, many agricultural land in the surrounding area uh, to become built up er uh, area to, to expand their their cities. 
And uh, of course, uh, and usually these initiatives come from uh, uh, private uh, uh, parties and also from the public. So the municipalities, usually the, the government or public authority, just accommodate you know, uh, the needs of, uh, of the people. If they want to have new uh, new residential area, uh, if the public or private parties would like to have new area for factories, for for uh, business activities, so uh, they come to the uh, to, to the public authority, and the public authority try to accommodate this by providing land, uh, and uh, and so uh, provide uh, the facilities, uh, um, of course, to accommodate those uh, activities. Uh, only in the beginning of nineteen centuries, then spatial planning in the Netherlands uh, uh, was characterized by the increasing role of the central government. So, uh, so only in the 19th centuries, then the the, the the public works department was established in the Netherlands, which is responsible for spatial planning and the development in the country for the whole country. And uh, at these times, the collaboration between government and pri private sectors also increased. Uh, so before, the, most of initiatives come from the uh, private sectors, from the uh, public, not from the public authority. But since, since uh, starting 19th centuries, especially uh, after the uh, the war, yeah, World War uh, One and the Second World War, World uh, War. So the, the role of central government actually uh, um, uh, was increasing in the country. And uh, the central government and also local government tried to create more collaboration with, with private sectors uh, to make uh, a special plan and to realize their special plan. Uh, <clears throat> and um, concerning the, uh, the, the, the special plan itself, yeah. so only in 1931, the central government issued what they, uh, what can be considered nowadays as the first spatial plan, uh, the real spatial plan at the national level. So the central government issued what they call as urban area development plan. Yeah. So to ex extend the, the um, many urban area in the Netherlands to accommodate the uh, the booming of of population and also the booming of uh, activities in the countries. So this is uh, uh, this is a since 1931, and even uh, even so, even more after the, the the World War II, and in only in 1965, the first law or special planning act, uh, the, the law related to to special plan, was um, issued or or established. They call it a uh, special uh, special planning act. Uh, that later on in 2008, uh, it was uh, ratified or renewed. Yeah, uh, this uh, this law. Uh, and um, at, uh, also at that time in 1965, the uh, for the first time that there was a, a special ministry or a department at, at the national level uh, uh, that is um, uh, 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 focused on on special planning. They call it the Ministry of Housing, Special Planning, and Environment. But nowadays, there's uh, this ministry was already. Uh, uh, how to say it is no longer exists anymore. This ministry because there's a fusion, but I will explain about that later on. But uh, in 1965, uh, the the Dutch government created a, a ministry together uh, that uh, really concerned with uh, special planning in the country. And as already a little bit mentioned before, uh, the 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 law, the special planning law or special planning act that first established in 1965 was uh, updated but it will be replaced soon yeah by what they, uh, they, they call in here as environmental law or environmental act um so the special planning process in Netherlands in general looks like this yeah so based on the law in 1965 yeah or before 2008, so uh, the, the the planning process uh, first the, the national uh, uh, the national government um, uh, have uh, has had their their key policies on on uh, special planning. So they have um, uh, they they had uh, uh, um, ideas perhaps, or they they had an, uh, a a plan. They have a goal development goal that should be accommodated in in special plan. 
and based on that they they made regional plan at uh, at provincial level and also the the, the municipality also uh, uh, have to take this uh, as something uh, binding for for them to make their their uh, 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 special plan and they call it first as a structure plan so they make the structure i think in indonesia uh, looks like uh, the rencana tata ruang yeah? and uh, rencana tata ruang wilayah so in indonesia that's uh, the structure plan so um, and afterwards uh, based on the structure plan the municipality create their land use uh, plan or zoning plan and this land use plan and zoning plan is before 2008 should uh, be approved uh, should be approved by provincial government <clears throat> yeah uh, but after 2008 this is changing in in the, the process of special planning so the national government and the provincial government only create what they call a structure structure vision say so they do not make structure plan but they made structure vision yeah it's like the vision to uh, what they would like to have uh, uh, on their land in the next i don't know 30 years or in the next 15 years or the next 10 years something like that and um uh, until municipality they have this what they call a structure vision and this structure vision yeah uh, uh name it at the national level provincial level or municipal level this structure vision actually is not binding yeah it's not binding by law it's all uh, uh, it only meant to give guidance to, to, to the uh to the municipality and to the people uh <clears throat> for what they would like their, their their land to be in the future but it's not binding by law so if they deviate from this vision there is uh, no real uh, penalty or there, there 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 will be no real consequence rather than uh, that the people will 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 question them of course if they deviate from their vision uh, and based on this vision then the municipalities the only municipality make their land use plan yeah uh, so be before the uh, the, uh, the land use plan also made only by municipality but the national and the provincial level can make the uh, can make uh, uh, could make their the structure plan but after two, uh, 2008 there's no structure plan anymore only structure vision and then municipality create their land use plan and zoning plan based on their own structure vision but they can also adopt some structure vision from the national and provincial level uh, and sometimes national and province uh, province uh, go provincial government can also uh, make their uh, land use plan and zoning plan if uh, <clears throat> they have a strategic vision or strategic plan to be established in a certain piece of land but then they have to negotiate with municipality because in the end municipality should accommodate this plan uh, uh, this national and also provincial plan yeah so they, they need to negotiate with municipality where in the, the certain municipalities they can uh, place these activities that actually uh, strategic for the national and also for uh, for the provincial government uh, but this law again as mentioned before will be changed again yeah so we don't know when because the the law is already there so like indonesia uh, the netherlands also now have a, a kind of ombudsman ombudsman law a law that combine many different laws but the, that uh, many different laws in the netherlands uh, um, actually what they call now is environmental law or environmental act so there there is no longer a special plan act or special planning some special planning law but it's all already um, uh, already combined in what they call in uh, 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 as environmental law in the country so but this uh environmental law we don't know yet even though it's already been uh um uh, developed uh, it's ready since i don't know five, five years ago but it's not formally been uh, enacted so to say so it's not uh, um uh, uh formally implemented uh, at the moment so there the, the, uh, there's always delays now it's only five times they uh, they delay the implementation of the law so uh, since 2021 and they, they, uh, and now they, they said uh, they expect that this law will be formally implemented in uh, early 2024 so next year so the main difference in in here so the first about the the the, the structure vision they do not have special uh, structure vision and, uh, anymore 
So, the, uh, but now they, they, they have environmental fission, yeah, or environmental structure fission. They still have structure fission, but it should uh, combine many different things, but mostly to uh, to to support the uh, the quality of environment uh, uh, in the country. So they try to synchronize uh, the structure fission related to land use, environmental protection, infrastructure development, cultural heritage water management, and also the development of urban and also rural area. So from sector fission, they have environmental fission, as I mentioned before. And in terms of land use plan and zoning plan, so now they try to simplify the, the decision-making process, but still the this implementation uh, not really clear at the moment because they have to prepare many things. So including to establish new uh department in municipalities and also uh uh at the provincial level to safeguard this uh this new uh, new law uh uh, uh or to the implementation of this this new law so i, I hope uh i give a rather clearer <laughs> uh, view about how the dutch planning process uh in the netherlands uh until now yeah um now uh, I will explain about the, the product of the plan uh, of the planning process itself so Dutch uh, spatial plan how does it look like actually so uh, as mentioned before in the beginning so there uh, the it's not only the national but also provincial and municip municipality they have they had what they call as structure vision it looks like this yeah so uh, so they, they draw yeah uh, I think it looks like um in indonesia so we, we also have like this in 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 our rencana tata ruang yeah, in our uh, special uh, plan so um uh, they, they have uh, the, the the structure uh, structure plan so um but again uh, it, it is not binding yeah? so in the netherlands it's not binding so they, they might uh, think about so this area should be strengthened in terms of their agriculture activities or in terms of their um, uh, industrial or or, or um, uh, commercial activities or that there should be new residential area in this uh, uh, um, in this area something like that. So they have a, a, a vision. So they, they call it structural vision. How they envision the countries. Or, or the the area, if it's uh, uh the, the province, if it is at provincial level, and also at municipal level. So how they envision uh the, the future of of of, uh, of that particular uh, uh area. Uh, but as I mentioned before, so this national structure law now is changed into what they call as environmental structure plan or structure vision. Yeah. So uh, it's not only about how to accommodate or how to allocate activities, but they have to make sure nowadays uh, that, uh, uh, that several several aspects of um, uh, of the environmental uh, uh, well-being, so to say, are included in the vision or in the plan. Yeah, for instance, to, to improve the the healthy cities region, sustainable economic growth potential, future-proof development of rural areas. This this should be in the uh, in the in the vision yeah so uh, not only at the national level but also provincial and uh, and a municipal level so now every municipalities so uh, every province in the netherlands should make their own environmental structure plan or environmental structure vision so this uh, uh, in uh, if this is at national level they also have at, at the provincial level so this I take the the uh, take um, um, example from uh, the province where I live called uh, the province of Gelderland. Yeah, so it can be different. Yeah, from one municipality and uh, 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 one province and uh, to the other can be different. So they they might have their own focus. For instance, uh, in here in the, in Gelderland, they mainly fo focus on circular economy, biodiversity, climate adaptation, and energy transition. Other municipalities might uh, uh, focus on different things, yeah. But they should mention about how they will protect the environment, social cohesion, and also urban de and rural development in the area. But again, the focus can be different. <clears throat> and not only province in municipal level, they also have to make that. And uh, it can be related to the uh, to the government above them, 
yeah because it, this is the, the example from the city where i live nijmegen yeah so in here they 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 they, they focus on a uh, compact and dynamic city climate adaptation healthy and green city and also uh, energy transition so a little bit similar with uh, with uh, in the province but it doesn't have to be actually so in here nijmegen also thought that it is very very important to have a healthy and green city and how they deal with climate uh, uh, climate change so they have a climate adaptation uh, vision uh, uh, for, for the city and based on this structure uh, vision then they make land use and zoning plan so uh, in the netherlands all the land use and zoning plan uh, sh should be submitted even though each municipality is responsible to make their own land use and zoning plan but they all have to be submitted to the national government and the national government have this a uh, website where we can see all land use and zoning plan in the country yeah so if we put is uh, the address in here so they can you can see how the the the, the land use plan uh, zoning plan for for that uh, particular area so if we zoom in one of the uh, of the area it looks like this for instance so this is i think yeah i look at the zoning plan and land use plan uh, uh, in the area where I live. So I live in this area. <laughs> so this is my house in here. So we can click everywhere in, in the country how the, the land use and zoning plan. So they have to submit it, yeah. Uh, but uh, then they can relate this uh, to the vision they have uh, uh, that mentioned in, in, in the, uh, before they call it the structure of vision, but now it should be uh, 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 in what they call as environmental structure of vision or structure plan. Uh, then when they have the plan, how the, the Dutch government uh, at municipal level, at provincial level and national level would implement their plan. So that's what I'm going to explain or discuss uh, next. Yeah. So once they have the plan, the, Nether the Dutch government has mainly three strategies how they implement their plan. First, what they call as active land policy. Yeah. So this is the, the, the strategy that um, usually municipality, because as you, uh, 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 as I mentioned before, so uh, it is the municipality who actually has the responsibility to create uh, or to to develop a, a land use plan, a zoning plan, yeah. And how the municipalities uh, implement their land use plan? So first, by using what they call as active land policy. In here, public authority, the municipality, when they have a plan, then they start to buy land or they start to acquire land. Yeah, uh, like in Indonesia, most of land in the Netherlands actually not belong to the government. It's belong to private sector, private parties. So when the government would like to implement their plan, first they have to acquire the land first uh, from the private sector, of course, from the uh, private landowners. Uh, but since uh, in some municipalities already bought the land since decades or even hundred years ago, so they. Uh, 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 they have in their position a big chunk of, of land. And the easiest way, of course, for them to make a, a plan, uh, to make a land use plan, if they would like to accommodate, for instance, new uh, commercial areas or new residential area in their uh, land use plan. So the easiest way, of course, to develop that uh, activities on their own land, yeah? land that be uh, owned by the, uh, by, the, uh, by the government, by the municipality. But if they need more land than what they own, then they start to acquire land. They start buying land. Yeah? And after they buy the land, they prepare the land and service the land by providing in a necess necessary infrastructure and services to the land. And they also uh, 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 parceling the land. They divide the land and parceling the land to make it ready for the development. So let's say it is uh, uh, um, uh, whatever kind of development they mention in their land use plan. It can be for residential area, for commercial area, or for industrial area. Once they, they, they have the land, they parcel the land, uh, and then surface the land and pre uh, preparing the land, uh, uh, providing the land with the, the uh, necessary infrastructure and services so it can accommodate the activities according to the plan. And after that, they can sell the, the, the parcel. Yeah. Or they can develop themselves. Yeah, they can sell the parcel to the uh, to the land developers or to the end users, uh, or they, they 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 first develop it by themselves. They they develop the houses by themselves. So municipality uh, develop the house, 
or the municipality develop the, the industrial area or the commercial area themselves. And only afterwards, they sell it to the end users. Yeah, Or they only sell the, the parcel uh, and then let the, the, the uh, uh, private developers to develop the land accordingly to the plan. Yeah. So this is the, the first strategy what they uh, what they do. Many municipalities did that even until now. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, so in in this case, the municipalities actually act as if uh, the, the same as uh, 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 land developers yeah? or property developers. So they act as property and land developers actually because they they acquire land. And they serve. They, they provide the land with uh, with infrastructure, and they also develop the land by themselves according to the plan uh, um, uh, that they that they made earlier. Um, this is the the example. Yeah. So I took the example from from my own cities. So this area when they would like to uh, to uh, expand the activities uh, of the cities. So uh, this is the main as you can see here. So this is the plan. They made the plan in 1996, since 1996, to uh, to expand the city to the north part of the uh, of the city. So um, uh, across this is the uh, the river. So the, across the river, because the uh, the the activities uh, growing so much in the uh, in the city center and all the city and the whole. So they need new area to accommodate those activities by developing new residential area and also commercial area for. Uh, uh, um uh, uh, uh for, for the people who lives in this uh, uh in here so there are uh, 13000 new houses should be built and mix other occupied and social housings for renting also for uh people who would like to buy the house and also some additional commercial area they, they develop new infrastructure they start the project in 1995 but only finish i think if i'm mistaken in 2015 or to, uh, even nowadays, there's still some part of this area that's still under construction or under development uh, until now. So, but in this area was developed by, uh, by using active land policy. So, municipality actively acquire the land, and they some of the uh, of these houses developed by municipality themselves, and some of them they give it to the uh, to the private uh, developers to develop it according to the uh, to the plan made by the municipality yeah uh with this active and policy of course municipalities can have a several advantage because it can ensure and can control the implementation of their land use plan and it's easy for the municipality to integrate special plans with other development objectives yeah? and even though it's not the main objective of the municipality to gain profit from these uh, strategies but they can get certain or a uh, uh, certain uh, benefit, financial benefits from land sales or also from the property sales, yeah? And they can also guarantee the quality of the development because they made the, pl the plan itself and they would like to have a, a certain quality and they can guarantee it by themselves because they build it by themselves, right? So this is the advantage. But this strategy also have uh, has a certain uh, uh, disadvantages. First, it has high risk, of course. Especially when there's decreasing demand or the market value uh, failure, yeah, and where there's delay in the development, then the municipality should bear the risk by themselves. And if you still remember, in two thousand eight and also uh, two thousand eighteen, there was a, 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 a crisis, economic crisis, yeah, started from the property crisis in Europe and I think also in many countries in the world. And because of this, many municipalities in the Netherlands went bankrupt because they already acquire land, they already try to develop the land, yeah, but they couldn't sell it because the demand, the, the decreasing demand uh, for the uh, new houses and also new commercial and industrial area. So they, they went bankrupt. Some municipalities actually went bankrupt because of this. And also because of the delay in the development process, they also had to bear the, the, the financial risk. And because of the mark, housing market um, dominated by, 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 the, by public sectors, so it creates less competitive market. So in the economic uh, point of view, so the, the markets become less efficient because of this, even though many private developers likes this, but in the end, it makes the market less efficient. So that's uh, all the, the main disadvantage 
disadvantages of uh, active land policy. And especially because uh, after the crisis, after the, the property crisis in 2008, and later on also in 2018, so uh, many municipalities uh, in the Netherlands actually turned to the uh, to the, the other strategy. So they call it as passive land policy. Yeah. So even though the strategy already exists since the beginning, but many municipalities actually didn't use this strategy. So passive land policy, basically, the municipality, when they, they finish ma making making the plan, land use plan, so they just wait. Yeah. So they just wait for the uh, uh, for the landowners to develop their own land. Yeah. So the uh, uh, people who like to develop the, the land, so they will look at uh, the development plan, whether it is in line or not with the uh, land use plan made by the municipality. If it is in line, then they will grant the development permit. And if it's not, they do not uh, granting the development permit to the landowner or land developers. So I think this, uh, uh, this uh, practice uh, is quite uh, common in many countries in the world, including in Indonesia. Yeah? So the, the, the government, the plan, and then just uh, wait and see how the, uh, the the private sectors would like to develop their land and then look whether the, the plan uh, um, um, submitted, so to say, by the private sectors in line or not with the plan uh, made by the municipality or by the public authority. Um, yeah, of course, this has an advantage because the municipality doesn't have to bear the risk. Yeah, but some in many cases, the municipality, the municipalities cannot really implement their plan accordingly to the timeline they made in the land use plan yeah so that's the, the main disadvantages so but uh since the uh, uh, the crisis as i mentioned in 2008 many municipalities actually turn to this uh, to this um uh to this strategy because they cannot bear the risk anymore they don't have any means financial means actually to uh, to implement the plan by themselves and <clears throat> there's many places in the Netherlands actually use this this uh, this strategy. One uh, of them in here, I took uh, one from the um, from Amsterdam, uh, the, called Bouwkstadterham. So it was a dockland area in the north part of Amsterdam. It used to be uh, a port, yeah, uh, um, but not for passenger port. Uh, but the port uh, uh, used by Shell company, so it was a uh, uh, deteriorated air area. But they would like to uh, renew this area to become a new vibrant residential area and commercial area. But they don't have any means to 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 to, to, to realize the plan. So they made the plan and then they offer it to private sectors to develop it. So um, uh, the first project uh, 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 which the municipal government experienced, uh, this is actually the first project uh, where the municipal uh, government experienced with the new local and non-statutory instrument uh, designed for transformation of the area. So they would like to transform the, uh, um, uh, in this scale. It is the first, the first plan in, in the Netherlands, actually. Because as I mentioned before, many municipalities likes to, to, to use what they, uh, uh, active land policy. But it's quite successful, even though still continue until now. It's quite successful in some uh, uh, in Amsterdam. Uh, the third, uh, oh yeah, in, in this um, uh, passive land policy, some uh, in many cases the municipalities can make an agreement with with the private sectors, what they call as developers' obligation. So it um, uh, it. So for, for, for instance, in, in here, the, the municipality, before they, they grant a, a, a permit to developers, so they make agreement whether the, the, the developers could also contribute to some public infrastructure or public service development in, in terms of, um, uh, or in form of money, land or construction service. Yeah? So that the, 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 the municipality, eh, sorry, the, the developers or property owners uh, or developers should pay or must pay uh, to pay uh, to the to the to the public authority uh, but of course in many cases this is also vulnerable to corrupt practices yeah so corruption also ha happens in the netherlands even though perhaps not as massive in many developing countries but it there, there, there could be co coalition in 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 this kind of practices so, um, uh, but nowadays, uh, of course, the, the, they they strengthen the the, uh, the 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 law or the process, but it's still used by municipalities, especially to provide or to uh, to, uh, to to provide public infrastructure and services um, in in their area. 
And the third strategy is they call it organic land policy. So it is even more, how to say, extreme than passive land policy. If in passive land policy, first the municipality create the land and uh, the plan, yeah, they, they made land use plan, and after afterwards they, they can invite private developers to develop the, the land according to the plan. In here, even the plan is not provided by the municipality, or the uh, so the, the the municipality only provide certain land, yeah, without any uh, plan. Oh, but they have a vision for for the land. Perhaps this is for residential area, for commercial area. But they did not. They do not uh, uh, um, make the, the the special plan or land use plan for the area. So they invite uh, individuals or developers, whoever would like to uh, to to reside in the area or to have their ac uh, activities in the area, to make the plan by themselves. Yeah, and of course the municipality can facilitate the uh, this land making process yeah so they, they sell the, the, the land and then they facilitate the the creation of the land use plan for the area together with the land owners themselves and uh so they, they're handing this this responsibility to even the, the, the responsibility for providing facilities in the area also should be in the hand of the land owners themselves so it's really organic so bottom-up process of uh, of development so of course, in here the, the risk, uh, the financial risk for the uh, for the municipality even lesser, yeah. But uh, sometimes it's quite uncertain because the the the, the, the landowners uh, are the uh, can can uh, can come up with their own ideas, and then the municipality should be able to facilitate to get uh, them and integrate uh, the, the 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 plan or the development with a bigger development in the surrounding area. So one of the biggest uh, area that developed with this strategy was in uh, is in the Almera area. So uh, uh, they call it Osterwald. Yeah. So they built on they call it the new land. So the municipality uh, um, actually in here uh, provide certain piece of uh, uh, a particular piece of land. Yeah. Resulting from reclamation, and uh, it's quite big. So four thousand three hundred hectares area. Yeah. As is at the moment, is the biggest project that applies uh, this uh, organic uh, uh, strategy, what they call it. And in the beginning, even though it's not binding again, so the, the municipality envisioned that it, there will be 15,000 houses and with 12, 20 hectares of office space and so on and so forth. But again, it's not binding. Yeah, so it's just sufficient for municipality. In the end, it uh, it is the, uh, the 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 community would like to recite there uh, that uh, make the plan and then uh, uh, develop, uh, develop the area. So um, yeah, those are the three main strategies that can be uh, carried out by the municipalities or public authorities to develop and to implement their land use plan. So uh, of course, uh, uh, I already mentioned some advantage and disadvantages, but there are still many issues and challenges related to special planning in Netherlands nowadays. As I mentioned before, economic crisis. Uh, uh, economic crisis. So um, uh, it happened in 2008, 2018, and nowadays it's also happened again, uh, as you know, because of the uh, many conflict in the surrounding area, Ukraine and Russia. We don't know what happens if this uh, conflict in 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 Middle East uh, escalating. So it will um, uh, influence the economic activities all over the world. Yeah, and it has caused many municipalities to experience difficulties in continuing and to practice active, active land policy when there's uncertainty in in economy. Yeah, so it, it will be hard for the even harder for municipalities to practice their active land policy. And at the moment, the Netherlands also in a deep housing crisis. Yeah, it, it results of various factors, including economic crisis. So uh, at the moment, uh, uh, there, there's uh, less supply uh, for housing in the Netherlands and that lead to housing crisis in the Netherlands. So uh, many municipalities actually in big trouble to, to supply uh, new houses uh, uh, for, for, for their residents. Yeah? And also energy crisis as the results, yeah, one of them are the results of Ukraine-Russian uh, war, which in the end also influenced the housing crisis in the Netherlands. Yeah? So, um, because of this energy crisis, so many houses should uh, be equipped with uh, energy efficient uh, facilities that make housing development more costly at the moment. 
that lead to housing crisis. So that's one of the reasons why there is a housing crisis, even though it's not the only reason. There's many other reasons that lead to housing crisis in the Netherlands. One of them, actually, the, this energy crisis. And also environmental crisis. Yeah. So uh, I show you the picture before the Netherlands from above. Yeah, but I view. Looks like green area everywhere. But actually, it's not as beautiful as it looks like as it looks like yeah so the netherlands already create many emissions from its long history of agricultural activities and there's many uh, 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 the, the many uh, soil in the netherlands actually poisons by this uh, pesticides uh, for agriculture area so uh, the, the 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 dutch government actually uh, um, uh, 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 they have a big pressure for, for, from uh, not only from EU but also from the, uh, uh, from their own citizens to reduce their their, their emission, especially from from uh, agriculture uh, activities. So they have high carbon and nitrogen emissions uh, uh, in the country. Yeah? And apart from that, there's also a social crisis because of the migration. So maybe you heard about that in Europe uh, get influx uh, of migration from uh, Middle East, and I don't know maybe because of this current. Uh, a crisis, it will uh, uh, even more at the moment. Uh, yeah, but it re uh, creates a uh, certain uh, social crisis in many places in the Netherlands. So that uh, spatial plan should be able to deal with this kind of situation. And uh, at the moment, there's many failure to deal with those situations. So perhaps the, the 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 countries still need alternative spatial planning paradigms. Uh, that uh, accommodate uh, different interests rather than focusing on the content and results of the plan itself. Yeah, even the, even though they already try to move toward that direction, but still many things should, should should take place to 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 make this happen. And also the problem of finan uh, how to finance a, a, a certain development a development plan. So uh, at the moment, the Dutch, uh, many Dutch municipalities also have difficulties how to finance their their development development plan. So maybe uh, the, the countries or many municipalities so in need of alternative development uh, financing uh, strategy. So as an effort to implement uh, their plans. So um, this still big uh, homework for many special planner in the Netherlands. Yeah, how to deal with this uh, these issues and challenges and how they need to shift from uh, current paradigms and current strategy, how they uh, develop and also implement their plan. So I think uh, I will close my talk there so we can hear from Mas Fajar and we can also discuss later on um, uh, um, together uh, based on my talk. Thank you very much. So I give the, the screen back to Pa Agung. Thank you. I'm sorry if I take the, the time uh, too long. No worries. Thank you, Pa Ari. Uh, what a nice presentation. And uh, for me, it's quite, uh, not quite, it's very useful. Uh, many new things there. <laughs> Thank you. And <clears throat> before we continue with the Pa Fajar's presentation, I would like to read uh his cv in as short as possible um of course uh, i know that many of you if not all already uh, know pa pajar very well yeah um bapak dr fajar hari mardian syah MTMDP. Uh, he is uh, an associate professor here at the Department of Urban and Regional Planning, Faculty of Engineering at the Ponegoro University. Uh, he's got his uh, doctoral degree in management of spatial and urbanization from the University of Paris. S. Prang. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, he also holds a master, a double master's degrees. Uh, one from the University of Queensland, it's master in uh, development planning, and another one from 
uh, Institute of Technology at Bandung, Indonesia. It's a master in urban and regional planning. Uh, two um, master degree, Pak Agung, not double master. Uh, yeah, double degrees. Not degree. No, no, no not, <laughs> double, not double degrees. But two master degrees. Yeah, two master degrees. Separated master degrees. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then his research interests include, among others, uh, sustainable urban, sorry, sustainable regional and urbanization uh, and small towns and cities development. Also, metropolitanization of small cities as well as uh, regional inequality related to metropolitan development. Um, so far, yeah, his research uh, projects, uh, many of them in Java, yeah, with the case of uh, several small cities development in Java. And also some publications here, the list. Um, I would like to read just two of them. Uh, the most recent, no, I think it's not most recent. It's, it's actually a bit out of date, Pak Fajar. <laughs> you should renew that. Anyway, in this list, uh, the most recent is this. Um, in an, IOP conference series. It is the Earth and Environmental Science series with the paper entitled Peri Urbanization of Small Cities in Java and Its Impacts on Paddy Fields, the Case of the Gal Urban Region, Indonesia. The year 2021, it is co authored with as Ma'arif and Pak Mi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me actually. <laughs> Thank you. And the second one is uh, published in Journal of Environment and Urbanization Asia, volume 12, uh, issue number one, the year 2021. Yeah entitled New Patterns of Urbanization in Indonesia, Emergence of Non-Statutory Towns and New Extended Urban Regions. Uh, so, um, yeah, you can ask this uh, list uh, from uh, Intan if necessary. And I see the consistency of his research interest here in the list. Uh, um from Pak Fajar. Thank you, Pak Fajar. And without further delay, now we invite Pak Fajar to present his speech. Um 30 to 40 minutes, yeah, Pak Fajar. Uh, please uh, the next 30 to 40 minutes is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Gong, for your uh, introduction of my uh, background and today uh, good uh, afternoon everybody uh, afternoon. Hope, hopefully we all, we all in the good health and good uh, yeah good health uh, to have the discussion uh, please uh, let me uh, share my screen uh, to have sorry sorry of report some uh, this one do you have my uh, screen uh Pagong and everybody yes clearly yes, okay. you can see that part. yes thank you thank you uh i'd like to uh talk about uh, why do i have this one uh oh sorry sorry i mistaken to click something so, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'd like to talk about the growth of towns as urban concentration 
in the territory of Kabupaten, which I believe will be the greatest challenge of urbanization in Indonesia in the near future. Uh, there are several uh, topics to discuss. First, I'd like to uh, discuss about the urbanization process that has uh, turned into the regional urbanization. And then uh, I'd like to discuss the growth of the towns in the territory of Kabupaten as the non-urban region. And also uh, then I'd like to talk about the link about, among the production function of the region and the service uh, function of the towns to see how uh, I mean uh, one uh, facet of the uh, challenge in our urbanization uh, process in Indonesia in uh, yeah, today and the near future. Yeah, we come to the urbanization uh, process in Indonesia that uh, lead Indonesia into what we call as the urban community uh, today uh, by uh, the increasing of uh, sorry uh, how uh, could I have the uh, uh, cursor do you have my cursor in in the screen yes yes okay uh, yes, you can see yes. yes thank you very much uh, yeah uh, the urbanization process in Indonesia have uh, lead Indonesia into uh, urban community because today, uh, since 2012, uh, the number of urban population has reached more than the rural population. It uh, increased from about only 3 million in 1920 to become about 120 million in 2010. And how? is the uh, one uh, characteristic of the urbanization uh, process in Indonesia lead to kabupaten. We have today not only in uh, daerah kota to be the place or the arena of urbanization. We can see here starting to uh, starting from uh, 1990 uh, based on the uh, national uh, census uh, uh, in 1990 we can see here that the number of urban population in the Kabupaten has reached more than uh, what we have in daerah kota. This is one uh, important characteristic that happened in urbanization process in Indonesia. And if we see as the uh, what we call as the urbanization process, then we can. Uh, uh, have the urbanization process in Indonesia is not only based on the uh, city-based urbanization process, but it has come into the regional-based urbanization process. That is the urbanization or the growth of urban population as well as the urban space with the regions as the reference of boundaries of the process. So, uh, referring to the urban population growth and the uh, uh, urban center or urban areas grow in the regional context, then we have the transformation process of regions in Indonesia from rural to urban characteristic. We have, uh, we'll have, uh, we have some main features in the regional urbanization process. The first is the increasing of the urbanization level of regions. A little, uh, 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 similar to what we have in Indonesia, that we have uh, what we call increasing proportion of urban population uh, compared to the total population, we have also this situation in many parts of Indonesia, especially if we see the, uh, uh, the, the, the Kabupaten regions. There are many regions or many Kabupaten in Indonesia that has entered or the have transformed into what I said as the urbanized Kabupaten. Why? Because the number of urban population of the Kabupaten has reached more than 50% of the total population. So the Kabupaten could be uh, classified as urbanized Kabupaten, even though most of the land area in the Kabupaten still uh, uh, characterized by non-urban activities. 
The second uh, features of the ur regional urbanization is the growth of cities and other urban concentration in the region. Where when within this growth, there are uh, several uh, phenomena that is the growth of every cities in the region and also the expansion of cities. There are uh, uh, there is also the creation of new uh, cities and towns in the region, and also the increasing or intensifying interaction between cities, towns, and other urban uh, other urban concentration in the region, and uh, that makes the strengthen of the uh, new uh, regional structure uh, as the result of the regional urbanization. And uh, the main features of regional urbanization in Indonesia is what I said before is the growth of the existing cities, including the internal restructurization, restructuring of the cities, and also the external expansion of cities beyond the city's boundary, and also the growth and expansion of towns in the territory of the Kabupaten. In fact, uh, most of the town, if we cannot see, uh, if we don't say, as every town in the Kabupaten has also the two uh, process of what we have in the cities, the internal restructuring of the towns and the external expansion of uh, the town beyond the previous uh, boundaries. And here I try to have uh, cities as the urban uh, concentration with political administrative, administrative status or daerah kota in, uh, in Indonesia and the towns is the urban concentration is the territory i mean the urban concentration in the territory of kabupaten what we have as sometimes we call as kota kecamatan or something like that means that the urban concentration that are located in kabupaten this is i mean this town have different characteristic with uh, the cities why because they don't have the uh, political administrative status so uh, they don't have also the authorities because some of the authorities belong to the kabupaten, not to the town. And yeah, this is actually uh, one of the uh, what you know, uh, characteristic of the differences between towns and city that I use towns to uh, define uh, the urban concentration in the territory of kabupaten and. Talking about the uh, towns, then we have uh, actually two uh, type of kabupaten that uh, uh, getting urbanized. The first is the uh, uh, what we call as the adjacent kabupaten or the kabupaten next to cities, and the other is uh, the non-adjacent kabupaten or kabupaten that is located not besides uh, cities, any cities in Indonesia. We have also in the adjacent uh, kabupaten, uh, I mean, uh, the kabupaten adjacent or next to uh, big cities like here, uh, next to Semarang cities like uh, Kabupaten Kendal, Kabupaten Demak, Kabupaten Semarang, and also uh, Kabupaten Gorobogan. And in the towns, we can uh, uh, classify also uh, the adjacent towns, that is the town that located just beside the border of the daerah kota or the city, and also the capital of the kabupaten. And the third uh, classification of the town in kabupaten is the other town. And the other town, there are uh, consists two uh, types of the uh, towns. That is the uh, center of economic activities or center of uh, uh, some uh, some towns uh, became uh, become a center of economic activities of the region or the, uh, the kabupaten and most of the town uh, the, uh, is only become the uh, center of political administrative and social uh, service activities. Uh, here uh, I'd like to go to the uh, 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 kabupaten that is next to small or medium cities like uh, Kabupaten uh, Tegal and Kabupaten Brebes uh, that is uh, uh, next to Kabupaten uh, sorry uh, Tegal City 
and also oh okay oh yeah and also Kabupaten Pekalongan and Kabupaten Batang that are next to uh, Pekalongan City. There are similarity about the towns in the Kabupaten, but uh, like uh, for example, the domination of the towns was uh, are actually the small size town with uh, which is town with less than uh, fifty thousand inhabitants, and some of the towns are uh, we call uh, them or we can classify them as medium sized town because. Uh, the town has a population between 50,000 to 100,000 inhabitants. But a few, uh, there are also few uh, what we call or what we can say as large towns uh, with uh, the town that have more than 100,000 inhabitants. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, Tegal region, uh, the large town are located next to the city and one of them is the capital of Kabupaten. Uh, the two, uh, there are two uh, large town in the uh, Tegal region in Kabupaten uh, next to uh, Tegal city. One of uh, two of uh, the two, uh, both of them are located next to the city. I mean, uh, located uh, adjacent to the border uh, area of the city. And one of them uh, is the capital of Kabupaten, uh, which is the town of Brebes, the capital of Kabupaten Brebes. And some of them, um, some of the medium-sized town uh, are the economic centers of the Kabupaten, like for example, the uh, towns of uh, uh, Adiwarna, for example. That is uh, the town is the uh, economic uh, center for the Kabupaten, but most of the uh, small town are play only as the uh, uh, center of the kecamatan or uh, the administrative political center for kecamatan or the sub uh, territorial region or territorial division of Kabupaten. The situation in the uh, Pekalongan region are uh, quite the same with the uh, uh, towns in the uh, Tegal region. Here we uh, see how is the, uh, 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 the development of the towns. I mean the, the, the increasing number of the town from 1990s into uh, 90, uh, uh, 2020, uh, 2019 actually. Yeah, that we can uh, what apa, uh, sorry, uh, we can uh, use to uh, illustrate the situation in uh, 2020. Uh, here, for example, uh, in both uh, region, we don't have the uh, large size town in 1990, but uh, today we have two large uh, size town or uh, the town with uh, more than 100,000 uh, population. This is a quite big town, especially compared, not only compared to the Netherlands situation, I think, but if we compare to the uh, situation in Indonesia also uh, uh, about uh, some decades ago. Just for example, uh, uh, Kota Sabang or Kota uh, Sawah Lunto, for example. Kota Sabang and Kota Sawalunto just uh, I think until now Kota Sabang is uh, still below two thousand uh, below one hundred thousand population and also uh, Sawalunto. Uh, but here, uh, if we have Kota Sabang and Kota Sawalunto have the authority to uh, manage the urban development in the in the cities, but we don't have that kind of what you call uh, power or the kind of authorities in uh, the towns in uh, uh, Tegal and also in Pekalongan. We have uh, two large uh, towns in uh, Tegal region, Tegal urban region, and we have one large town that is uh, Kota Batang in uh, Pekalongan urban region in 2020. That uh, what we, uh, we can say as a uh, new phenomena before we only have the medium-sized town 
until 2010. Eh, sorry, until uh, nine, uh, 2000. But starting 2010, we have the uh, large size town that uh, a town have more than 100,000 uh, population. This is the illustration about the uh, distribution uh, uh, location of the towns. We see here the towns are, I mean, the uh, uh, the formation of the towns uh, highly uh, influenced by the uh, spatial uh, characteristic or the location of the towns. Most of the town are located in the uh, regional access here. Actually, the Pantura Road that is uh, uh, going through the uh, the region. Uh, I have a uh, sound disturbance here because uh, some uh, people doing activities in the uh, building. Uh, I mean, I don't think. Uh, uh, I think uh, it is in the uh, department of uh, maybe uh, perkapalan or geology in the uh, seberang jalan over there. And yes, the uh, similar phenomena. Uh, there, are, uh, there is an enlargement of the existing uh, urban settlement. Uh, the enlargement of the size of the existing urban uh, settlement is the, uh, I mean, uh, the result of the regional urbanization process that happened in the region. And most of the larger urban settlements are located close to the core. And the growing process, including the expansion process and also merging process of the existing what Uh, we call as the urban uh, urban villages, or maybe not urban villages, but urbanized village. And the smaller size uh, urban settlement tend growing to uh, growing faster. And the increasing number of the urban settlement grow in the peripheries of the urban region. Here, for example, uh, the uh, I mean uh, the illustration about how actually uh, the town, uh, the growth of the town in, in Kabupaten uh, that is uh, present uh, in situ urbanization, means the urbanization that happened in the site. For example, in uh, Kabupaten uh, Tegal, for example, the number of uh, uh, urbanized village or a village that is uh, classified as urban uh, and then the uh, uh, the agglomeration of the urbanist, I mean the agglomeration of the adjacent uh, urbanized village form the town in the Kabupaten, in the territory of the Kabupaten. The urbanization process in the uh, region, in the periphery of the cities uh, shown by the increasing number of urbanized villages in the territory of Kabupaten. And this is actually that form the uh, town. And uh, just for example here, uh, there are uh, uh, what, uh, for example, uh, here we have uh, the situation, I mean, Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the condition of Tegal City and also the Perkalongan City, which uh, Tegal City in 2019 have about 200 something uh, urban population with the 6,000 uh, uh, inhabitants per square kilometers of density. And the situation in 1990s is Uh, about uh, the num uh, population number is uh, to 200 uh, something uh, inhabitants, I mean, uh, urban dwellers, with about uh, 5,000 uh, inhabitants per square kilometers in uh, the density level. And today we have uh, some uh, urban, I mean, some towns, uh, urban uh, concentration in the, in the area quite similar, uh, I mean, uh, have quite similar uh, density, level of density here, for example, uh, the Talang uh, town and also Dukunturi town has about 600 uh, inhabitants per square kilometers 
uh, quite similar with the uh, density of the uh, Tegal city. This situation also happened in the uh, city of, I mean, uh, the Pekalongan urban region that has, uh, perhaps we have here, the Kedung Muni town, the Tirbo town, and also the Wiradesa town that has uh, level, uh, uh, density level, population density level, uh, even uh, more dense that, uh, uh, more dense compared to what we have in Pekalongan city. So this uh, situation in, uh, uh, give us uh, some uh, example or some illustration that uh, the what's it called the growing of the town should be uh, should become uh, yeah we need to take more attention with the uh, uh, the growing uh, towns here and I'm sorry I have the uh, duplication and here is the uh, process of the growth uh, of the growth of large uh, size town for example Pemalang uh, the town uh, Pemalang uh, growing uh, uh, from uh, two uh, uh, towns that merge into one town to have the number of population uh, more than 100,000 population in 2020 uh, today. And uh, the uh, Petarukan town has also had a similar uh, process uh, with the uh, Pemalang town that uh, experience emerging process to become a large town uh, that have more than 100,000 population in the town. Uh, but the other town here, for example, uh, uh, Batang, uh, the, the town Batang, they don't have uh, the merging uh, process. They only have the growing process from uh, six urbanized villages in 1990 to uh, 13 urbanized villages and uh, the growing population from two thousand uh, about uh, 30,000 uh, urban population in 19, 1990 into active, uh, 85 uh, urban population in, uh, in the town. And then uh, they, I mean, uh, this uh, town, Batang, uh, growing into uh, 18 uh, urbanized villages and uh, in 2010 and uh, 19 urbanized villages in 2020. So we can see here uh, the growing of the town is actually highly influenced by the increasing number of the urban villages, the, the urbanized villages that. Uh, 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 bring the new classification, uh, the new classification or the reclassification of the village. Uh, get, uh, bring uh, the uh, urban population increase. Bring the increase of the urban population in the town. And in uh, the uh, small, uh, sorry, the medium uh, size. Uh, towns, we have also similar process. Uh, we have the uh, merging process in Kedunguni and also the Chomal uh, town and also in Tirto town in uh, Kabupaten Pekalongan. We have also this uh, growing number, I mean uh, the merging uh, process in the small towns. I mean uh, the towns that has uh, less than 50,000 uh, population in the town. So we have the uh, uh, some uh, mode of uh, growth uh, for the towns. And also we have just for example here uh, what we what uh, we can say as the new town uh, formation for the Warumpring towns and also the Ampel Gading town because they don't have uh, any uh, urbanized village in this uh, what's called uh, kecamatan in 1919 until 2000 they don't have the uh, urbanized village and uh, somehow in 2000 and uh, 2010 
the warung the kecamatan warung pring has three urbanized village that are located side by side among the three uh, urbanized village forming the warung pring town with uh, the population above 30 uh, sorry, yeah, 30, 000, uh, population that they have a kind of decreasing in the and 2020 into uh 20000 uh, inhabitants we can see here the dynamic of uh the the town's growth in the uh, kabupaten that is in uh, uh influenced by uh, the three or four uh, uh mode of the growth that is the merging process the growing process and also we have the combination process for example here the combination process of growing and margin uh, and merging uh, in Kedunguni and Tirto in Kabupaten Pekalongan and also we have what we call as the new town formation uh, like before we have uh, seen here also we have in uh, Moga town in Kabupaten Pekomalang what is the importance of the town is actually Uh, because the towns are uh, formed and grown uh, in the uh, rural areas. Uh, then how uh, the situation in the future is uh, what, I mean, uh, the challenge of urbanization process in Indonesia that perhaps in the previous area or uh, some decades ago, the urbanization process tend to uh, concentrate in big cities in Indonesia and also lead into what we call as the urban misery because of lack of infrastructure, I mean, because of the differences between the, uh, uh, the growing process and the growing of the capacity of the city to Uh, respond providing urban services and infrastructure and then because of the lack capacity of the uh, 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 of the cities then we have what we call this uh, urban misery like uh, what uh, poverty and also uh, uh, slum area and so on And that situation concentrated in uh, urban places. I mean, the big cities. But today and in the near future, the urbanization. I mean, uh, the growing of the town is not only concentrated in big cities anymore, but they also not only in uh, concentrated in the small cities, but they also. Uh, what you call uh, grown in uh, many areas like maybe in Bahasa Indonesia we uh, we have the proverb like jamur di musim hujan and this is actually one of our urban challenge in, in, in Indonesia in the near future we will have uh, so many challenges of urbanization not only in the uh, cities but also in the kabupaten and every kabupaten we have several uh, towns that not only small towns less than 50,000 population but also uh, medium sized town and even large town that if we don't have a good uh, management process in the development of the towns that we can have also we have Uh, yeah, the big uh, what we call uh, prospect of the uh, 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 replic uh, replication of urban misery but not in the big cities but in the small towns I mean the towns in Kabupaten why? because up until now we don't have the good uh, improve I mean a good direction in uh, improving the Uh, economic activities of the town. Here, I'd like to uh, 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 present uh, the how we can uh, see uh, the town is not 
uh, connected into the uh, economic production system of the town. For example, here I use the uh, uh, case of the in in uh, Tegal, uh, Kabupaten Tegal. We have here the uh, agricultural economic production in the region means in the every uh, kecamatan or the sub uh, territorial division of the kabupaten here we have uh, the illustration for uh, kecamatan Kramat we have also the kecamatan Suradadi uh, that in the uh, agricultural uh, point of view the kecamatan Kramat could be see as the center of the seed uh, is it right the uh, domba is seed right uh, is the center of seed production uh, system why because uh, the kecamatan Kramat has uh, uh, count, uh, 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 identified as the third largest kecamatan that produce seed in kabupaten uh, uh, Tegal and kecamatan Kramat has also uh, become the third kecamatan to that produce uh, unggas uh, including or involving uh, the uh, ayam potong or the uh, chicken meat and also the uh, chicken eggs uh, kecamatan Kramat has also uh, become the place where uh, the catfish production system in uh, Kabupaten Tegal and uh, we have also here Surdadi uh, has similar uh, production system with, what I mean with similar production system is we have uh, variation, we have uh, what you call uh, big uh, variation of product in every kecamatan here we can see Kramat, uh, Kecamatan Kramat, Kecamatan Surardi, and also Kecamatan Waru Reja, for example. And the service function of the town, for example, here in Kecamatan Kramat, uh, then, oh, sorry, uh, Kecamatan Kramat, and also uh, Kecamatan Surardi. Uh, yeah. uh, we, we can see here uh, uh, the service function of the region, or oh, sorry, of, of the towns in Kecamatan Kramat uh, Suradadi and Suradadi we can see here the uh, what uh, I mean uh, the surface is illustrated or uh, expressed or represented by the facilities we can see uh, the every Kecamatan here have the uh, social and also the uh, administrative uh, services but not all of the kecamatan have the economic services. Here, for example, kecamatan uh, Kramat or uh, Kramat Town have the economic services, but the economic services is, uh, here is TPP besar, means uh, tempat penggilingan padi or rice mill. Uh, rice mill as the uh, economic services in uh, Kecamatan Kramat, even though the uh, pro products of uh, Kecamatan Kramat is not uh, rice, and also here, for example, the Kecamatan uh, Suradadi have uh, TPI or tempat pelelangan ikan, and also the uh, industri pengolahan pekola, uh, 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 ikan or the uh, fish uh, processing uh, facilities. Uh, this is actually a little bit uh, similar with the uh, uh, sorry Suradadi uh, with the uh, production system because uh, the Suradadi town uh, Suradadi regional Kecamatan Suradadi produce uh, bandeng uh, bandeng is uh, uh, somehow I forgot the term in English uh, bandeng do you uh, know what is bandeng in English uh, pari Oh, Pago. Sorry, Sorry, I don't no. know. No. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I, we all know what bandeng is. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, we have uh, the example of uh, what we have in our uh, town. 
uh, connected into the uh, production system of the region. But the problem is not all of the town have that kind of situation. There are many uh, kecamatan don't have the uh, economic uh, service uh, facilities. Uh, not uh, uh, not only uh, connected to the uh, regional production system, but even they don't have uh, uh, what uh, we said as the uh, economic facilities. So uh, we have here. Uh, some uh, kecamatan have the uh, connected uh, production, uh, economic production system with the function of the uh, region. Like here, uh, kecamatan Kramat has uh, uh, tambak uh, bandeng or the uh, uh, yeah, bandeng fish uh, production system and they have the uh, tempat pelelangan ikan or uh, fish auction uh, center and also the fish processing center but this kecamatan has the uh, other production system like the uh, poultry production system uh, and also uh, the uh, sheep production system but they don't have the uh, economic uh, facilities that serve the production system so with this situation, we can uh, with this and this uh, situation has also happened in other kecamatan. We have uh, some kecamatan have the uh, linkage uh, among the production system of the region and the economic uh, facilities to process or to support the uh, econ the economic producing uh, production system, but. Uh, some other don't have the uh, uh, the facilities to support if uh, 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 involve I mean uh, including backward support or the forward processing for example here uh, uh, the pengolahan pertanian or pengolahan ikan could become a kind of uh, support, uh, processing support. But yeah, we need uh, to improve our uh, production system. We need not only what we call as the forward processing uh, activities, but we need also the backward support activities actually to make the uh, uh, production system become sustainable in the future. And with this, uh, analysis then we can see that most of our region has various uh, production function they don't have the or we can say they have a weak ident uh, ident indication of specialization in the production function and the service function of the town we can uh, see that most of the town if uh, if if we can uh, say as the all of the town have the political administrative uh, services, also all of the town have the social services like the educational and health services, but not all of the town have the economic production services. And the link between uh, the production function of the region and the service function of uh, the towns uh, only some of the town have the link among the production function of the region and the service function of the town. But uh, by the indication of the existence of the link uh, between the uh, economic production function and the uh, economic uh, facilities that relate to the uh, commodity produced by uh, the region. Here I use uh, agricultural commodities because most of the kabupaten here are the agricultural uh, uh, region, and the uh, many towns have no links with the uh, production uh, system. I mean the production uh, function, and the link is not only within the kecamatan or the sub. Uh, territorial division. I mean, uh, the 
in existence of the uh, the economic uh, facilities is not only uh, happen in the level of kecamatan, but some uh, case also uh, present the uh, in existence of the facilities in the level of kabupaten. This is actually what uh, should be concerned uh, because how we can improve our economic uh, production system in our towns to uh, dealing with the urbanization process if we don't have the uh, facilities to uh, support uh, the uh, economic production activities in the surrounding areas. In involving the uh, backward support and also the uh, forward processing activities to improve the capacity of the commodity or the economic activities to produce uh, welfare and distribute welfare not only to the uh, population in the towns, also in the rural areas and all in uh, the population in elsewhere. That is perhaps what I'd like to uh, discuss in this uh, afternoon here or in this morning for Pari. And thank you very much. I'll uh, give the uh, time back to Pak Agung as moderator. Thank you, Pak Agung and everybody. Thank you very much, Pak Fajar. What a nice presentation. And yeah, um, I should say I'm sorry because due to our limited time, I think we only have 20 to 25 minutes before Maghrib prayers time. And we already have six questions here in the meeting chat. Uh, four for Pak Ari and two for Pak Fajar. So I think uh, these are enough. Uh, hopefully, we can discuss all of them. Uh, to be fair, uh, I will uh, read the first question for Pak Ari and then first question for Pak Fajar and the second for Pak Ari, second for Pak Fajar. Okay. Uh, but to be fair as well, those who still have questions, please write up in the meeting chat and hopefully. Uh, later on, Pak um, Mbak Intan perhaps can uh, can deliver it to Pak Ari as well as Pak Fajar, and hopefully uh, both of our lecturers today can answer it. Okay. So the first question to Pak Ari is, uh, I should scroll up here. Yeah. Oh, from Fahri? From Fahri, yeah. Hmm. Mr. Ari, can the concepts and practices of spatial planning in the Netherlands be well adopted in Indonesia? Uh, what are the challenges and yeah. how to adapt to open space yeah. planning here? Please, Pak oh. Ari. Okay. Uh, thank you, Pak Agung and Pak Fahri. Um, so before I uh, explain about three different strategies, yeah, in the uh, how the the Dutch government, so to say, the public authority in the in the Netherlands, try to uh, implement their special plan or more uh, specific land use plan. So I think the the the, the second and the, the the third one is quite common in many countries, in, including Indonesia. But I don't think the first one can be implemented in Indonesia because of the law. So, but please correct me if I'm wrong. At the moment in Indonesia, I don't think public authority can act as a private, uh, as a property and land developers. It is it even is not easy for 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 uh, uh, for uh, public authority to, to acquire land to buy land, right? For any developments, uh, I, it only in 2012 we we have uh, in Indonesia. Uh, undang undang law for for land expropriation but it's only for public infrastructure if i'm mistaken but 
you, you know more uh, better than than I do, I, I suppose. <clears throat> and even so, still, 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 still not easy for 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 the government actually to acquire land. So even though it's already clear for public purpose, let alone if it is for residential area or for commercial area, that can be seen as a, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, we can always argue it is a, a beneficial for 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 public, uh, for for community, but uh, it's not really mentioned, of course, in the in the um, uh, uh, in our law. Uh, but for the second and the third, that, that's quite quite common. Even I, I mentioned uh, uh, many times to uh, to my colleagues in here, the, the third one, the organic land development. So in the Netherlands, they try to experiment it. But in Indonesia, it's already all over the place. All development in Indonesia actually uh, take place in an organic way. They, 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 they develop without any plan. The, 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 the people, the community make their own plan how to develop. And then the government has have to... Uh, 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 have to accommodate themselves actually uh, um, instead of the uh, the development follow the plan but this is uh, in the plan follow the development what what happens in indonesia that's actually the organic way right so uh, uh, yeah that, that's my my my, sh my sh short answer i i suppose so the challenge to uh, to adopt urban special planning in indonesia so um, uh, 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 the, the the disadvantage of the pass passive land uh, land, yeah, land uh, uh, land policy um, uh, um, the, the the government doesn't have any they ha the, the, the control uh, uh, on the implementation of land uh, uh, of a uh, land use plan is only on the uh, the granting permit right so then the the municipality uh, should be able to really safeguard the the the, the in giving the permit. So that is in line with, with the plan. So um, if the, if they don't, then uh, there should be penalty. There should be fines. Uh, uh, and I think in Indonesian uh, regulation, in our law, if I'm mistaken, there's even already quite clear what happens if uh, a development takes place not in accordance with with the plan. Right? There's all, even a, a certain fine and penalty already mentioned in our law. But <clears throat> why it's not being implemented? Yeah, that, that's something else, I think. So, uh, yeah. So, I, I think that should be strengthened. So the, the, uh, how to, 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 uh, uh, to safeguard the, the control of the implementation, that, uh, that's something that should be, uh, yeah, uh, that we need to pay attention to, I suppose. So, yeah. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, answer completely your answer uh, your questions but <laughs> i hope you get the idea <laughs> that's it okay thank you Pak Ari. i think it should be um studied with u.s supervisor perhaps <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 okay let's move on <laughs> to first question to pak fajar it is from Pak Fahri, oh, uh, but my policy is this, uh, 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 let's be equitable with people first, then, then, with, then with questions. So <laughs> let's go on to the second question to Pak Fajar, which is from Pak Radinal Jayadi. Uh, the problem faced by some people in rural areas is that the majority move to cities to look for work because most of the control of land resources is controlled by only a few people. As long as the state doesn't regulate and distribute land resources, the entire city will remain an option to work for work which of course will have an impact on traffic jams, urban sprawl, slums, and other urban problems. So it is very necessary to revise the basic agrarian law number no. five uh, oh. year 1960, returning it to article 33, paragraph three of our 1945 constitution. What do you think, Pak Fajar? Oh. Please, Pak Fajar. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Pak Agung. It is very hard, <laughs> the question from Pak Radina Hadjadi. Yeah? Uh, but I think uh, the function of land is not 
depend on how the land belong to. I mean, it is not huh? the uh, it is not depend on the distribution of the land to uh, someone, but the function of the land is depend on how the land is uh, what you call diberdayakan oh. uh, uh, utilized. Not utilized, but empowered. Mm, oh, the land yeah. is empowered. Uh, what we have in our uh, practical uh, planning is we only empower the urban land. We never give uh, the similar attention to empower the rural land. So the function of the land is less than the potential. Just for example, if we see Uh, uh, what uh, Pak Ari uh, saw to us, the rural land in the Netherlands, the what we call the uh, the form of the rural land is quite good, very different with our rural land in Indonesia. Why? Because we never plan the rural land, so we don't have the good infrastructure for the rural land. That's why the function of the rural land in Indonesia. Under the potential, if uh, the rural land in the Netherlands they don't have only this road, they don't have, they have also the uh, water uh, service. They also have the energy service. So the rural land in the Netherlands could be what we call as the greenhouses, the agricultural activities with knowledge, innovation, and technology. The situation that is not happen in Indonesia yet. Why? Because we don't give good attention to plan how the rural land should be developed, should be empowered. That's mm -hmm. why the function of the rural land is less of its capacity. So the function in uh, creating jobs is also uh, what you call uh, very low. Why? Because it doesn't have uh, the uh, modern and progressive activities in our rural land. That's why it is uh, what you call uh, 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 easy to understand why the surplus of labor in our rural area goes to the city. Why? Because they don't have any job. Maybe we need to Uh, what we call uh, shift or change our uh, uh, practical uh, planning in doing planning in our rural areas mm -hmm. so we have uh, the good form of land of rural land of agricultural land so they can have uh, they can be a place for the invest investment mm -hmm. good investment not only in urban land that become a place for good investment, but also in the rural land could become a good place for investment. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the investment is uh, uh, what called the trigger to create jobs in the rural mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. So maybe that is my uh, opinion It hmm. is not belong to the. I mean, it is not uh, 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 depend on what uh, to whom the rural belong to, but how can we can empower the the land, the, the rural land, especially uh -huh. here, because uh -huh. Pak Radina jadi asking about the uh, influx of. Uh, surplus labor from the rural area to urban uh, places. Mm. Uh, maybe that is my uh, opinion, uh, Pak Agung mm. and Pak Jedi. And thank you for the question. Mm. But yeah. uh, excuse me, Pak Agung. Yep. Yeah, is, is it, mm. Because it also intrigued me a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. Can I ask also ask Pak Rad, Pak Jaya, Radino Jayadi, what kind of uh, revised? Because because I also. Um, uh, Um, would like to see the revision of uh, basic agrarian law. It's completely outdated. It's since it's since 1960, of course, right? 60, And we, right. yeah. So we have a, many uh, de development. We have uh, uh, many things, challenges that not overseas. Uh, uh, yeah, 
the people who created that that law haven't seen uh, the, the current problem. So what kind of re revision? That is expected. Uh, this Paradinal and uh, Jayadi mentioned, uh, yeah, expected or mentioned in here. If I can ask back Pak Radinal yes, Jayadi. Yes, Pak Radinal Jayadi, <laughs> please. Are you still here? Perhaps he is already somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I've got a very good point from Pak Fajar. I don't know mm -hmm. whether Pak uh, Radina Jayadi understand or not, but a very good point is it's not uh, to redistribute the ownership, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the more important is uh, to redistribute uh, equitable access or equitable yeah access to to get uh, benefits from from the land it's, it's not necessarily attention. the ownership e e equitable attention i think perhaps attention yeah yeah mm. uh, yeah kind of like, like that okay yeah but sometimes ownership can also be a, a problem in my opinion Yes, because in, la in, in in land management, we do not mm. only deal with, with land use, but we also mm. need with land rights, of course, right? So mm. I, I think why we, we have a problems with land acquisition process in many cases, in many situations, the land ownership or the land right is not really clear, especially right. in Indonesia. So there's many disputes about who owns the right. So when we would like to place some certain activities on the land, even the activities in terms of facilities infrastructure is really mm -hmm. really hard because long dispute about who's on the land uh, and that's all also happened in, in in here in in the Netherlands but the thing is uh, uh, in here who owns the lands is much clearer of course rather than in Indonesia because they have a long history of cadastral system right yeah. so even it's quite open so but of course we have to to, to pay so if I put my my hand on the map, I, I yeah we we know who owns the land. So then when we would like to develop something on that per, uh, piece of land, we know to whom we have to should uh, we should uh, be dealing with. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we can have a, a long discussion uh, about that. Yes. Yes. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think uh, Pari mm -hmm. here the uh, the focus is the the function of the land in producing jobs, mm -hmm. not in uh, what you call uh, doing the uh, what you call uh, uh, the uh, 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 acquisition the land acquisition mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in the Netherlands and the, the rural areas I mean the rural lands uh, means uh, how then the rural land uh, produce jobs mm -hmm. by actually the uh, agricultural activities of course the agricultural activities uh, capacity to produce jobs is very low compared mm -hmm. to the urban uh, activities. Yeah, indeed. But mm -hmm. uh, one of the problem in Indonesia today is the, what you call, the uh, uh, perpindahan, not the movement, but the mm -hmm. uh, perpindahan, uh, the land uh, of the rural, uh, sorry? Migration. Not the migration. Yeah. No, no. I mean, what I mean is uh, the perpindahan uh, resource from the mm -hmm. rural oh. Urban uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. With uh, the situation in the Netherlands that the land, I mean the rural land, has been consolidated, so mm -hmm. the conversion of the land is very difficult to be happen. Mm -hmm. It is very different with the uh, mm -hmm. situation yeah. in Indonesia that the, yeah. the small pieces is much more easier to be uh, converse into mm -hmm. other uh, function. Uh, outside mm. the agricultural activities, mm. but the problem is what we have in the Netherlands. We need to preserve the function of our rural land in producing food system and also the mm. other material inputs to mm. uh, support our uh, economic activities, to support our community, to support our people. Actually, so what I uh, mention or what I mean with the give the uh, equitable uh, attention is also making the formation of the rural land become uh, 
much um, not easy to uh, be conserved, like uh, to be consolidated, like in the Netherlands. If mm. the consolidated, then the rural land not belong to anybody, but it's belong to a kind of uh, farming estate. Mm. Then, yeah, the uh, uh, what you call the the exploitation mm. of the rural land could become uh, in better way to have a, a better margin of the mm. exploitation of the rural land. So, mm. if the margin is good, then mm. the what you call uh, the intention to uh, mm -hmm. sell the land uh, mm -hmm. become much uh, uh, reduced, mm -hmm. and yeah, perhaps then uh, it can be preserved to be mm -hmm. uh, the agricultural land. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the ownership uh, uh, influence the mm -hmm. uh, the function of the land, mm -hmm. but. Uh, in the production system, I mean the mm -hmm. yeah, production system of the land, then mm -hmm. the ownership, I think, is not uh, the uh, most influential uh, factors. That is my, uh, what I want to say. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Pak Fajar. Uh, now, let's move on to the second question for Pak Ari. I think it is the last question, yeah, the others. Uh, okay. uh, Perhaps Pak Ari and Pak Fajar need to answer it in in in, in a written. <laughs> okay, it is from Bu Landung SRT. I was mm -hmm. wondering how does the central government in the Netherlands integrate ah, spatial planning question. conducted yeah. by local governments? Yeah. Uh, this is very yeah. different from Indonesia, where land planning is conducted from the top, uh, top mm -hmm. down. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, very interesting cool. question, Bulandu. Um, yeah, in in general, I might say that the in terms of land use plan, yeah, integrating integrated land, uh, integrating land use plan is not much the the central government can do in the Netherlands. Uh, because most of the land use plan made by municipality. But the, the, the national government should make sure that the integration in terms of access, for instance. So perhaps I can I can uh, share again my, my screen in here. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like, like, like this. So they do not really concern about the integration of plan in terms of land use. But more, for instance, when they, uh, 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 for instance, the, the, the national government um, are concerned about uh, how the cities and region can be developed in a strong and healthy ways, for instance. So, uh, and also uh, uh, the, the sustainable economic growth potential can also be accommodated. Yeah? So what they do mostly, for instance, actually to, 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 to create connection between cities and regions, for instance. So uh, uh, the, the the development or uh, the, the the flow of labor, the flow of materials can go smoothly from one area and the other area. Uh, the, for, for, for instance, like uh, uh, like the discussion with Pak Fajar before. So uh, in the Netherlands, also we can see the. I don't want to to say imbalance, yeah, because main 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 activities also happens in the big cities in urban area. While in rural area, so there's not much activities uh, uh, there. So, but for instance, many many small cities surrounding the big cities, uh, 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 um, they use it to 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 accommodate uh, residential activities. So then, the, the the movement, the mobility between the small city to big city is actually quite high in 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 the Netherlands. So people commute from anywhere. So so, so to accommodate this. To, to create the healthy and strong uh, um, uh, development. So what the, the national government do actually to create um, uh, infrastructure that connect them. So for instance, to create, uh, uh, to develop highways, to, 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 to develop, um, um, yeah, mostly highway or, or uh, transportation uh, infrastructure, maybe train or trams, uh, 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 small trains uh, uh, between cities in the Netherlands. But not in terms of uh, land use, yeah. So, uh, but in uh, uh, in 
Some cases, yes, they do. For instance, in early 2000, uh, 80s, for instance, or uh, since uh, 1970s until late uh, 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 early 1990s, when uh, the, the need for new housing developments quite high in the Netherlands. Now also like that, but back then, the national government tried to allocate certain area to become new residential building, uh, uh, new residential area. In that case, the national government ha had to uh, negotiate uh, with uh, uh, municipal uh, uh, many municipal governments to uh, implement their, their their plan in in that situation. So here, uh, then they, they try to make a balance uh, of residential area development in several places in the Netherlands. Then they have to secure the, the land. And in uh, to do to do so, they they, they had to uh, make uh, uh, make a negotiation with the provincial government and the municipal government to make sure in their uh, land use plan they can accommodate the the vision or the, the plan. So to say, this is not only the vision, but uh, the plan already um, uh, initiated by by the national government. So uh, that's. Uh, uh, what they do. So again, in terms of integrating land use plan, not much, unless they, 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 they do have a certain vision, they do have a strong plan that they would like to, uh, to, uh, to implement in certain area. In that case, they will make a negotiation with, with, with uh, a municipality, uh, uh, provincial government, and uh, more importantly, with uh, the, the municipal uh, governments in the Netherlands. So I hope you get uh, some uh, the idea. Yes, very much. Thank you, Masari. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pak Ari. And I think um, time is up. Uh, already sayup sayup mm -hmm. sampai. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm listening of Adan Maghrib. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, uh, I, I, I should give uh, time back to uh, Intan, yeah. <laughs> Please, Ma Intan. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Pak Fajar and Pak Ari, for the fruitful discussion we have today. And unfortunately, we have limited time, and we are in the in the end of the session today so we will have a photo session first uh please um, to all participants you can uh open your camera and we will have a photo session today uh right now okay one two three one two three One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much uh, for all participants. And uh, thank you, Pak Fajar and Pak Ari uh, for your presentation today. Thank you for giving us lectures in, the, in this series. And also, I would like to thank you, Pak Agung, as our moderator today. And we thank you to all participants who Still stay with us until in the end of the <laughs> event, and we will see you in the next international lecture series in the end of November. Thank you very much, and wassalamualaikum okay, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Pak Ali, Pak Fajar, Pak Sintan, Pak Landung, and everybody. Yeah, Pak yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih Mas Arya.